Good. Looking good. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, we got a little bit more <laughs> Smash 4 action, and I mean, what a crazy upset we just saw. Yeah. Connecticut's light, uh, sending Mars down to losers. It's been a while since Mars has tasted losers bracket in New England. But moving right on, yes. yeah, Tony Pajamas on a tear through the bracket today, playing Kool Aid, who's, well, he's in his usual comfortable losers semi spot. <laughs> So let's see what Kool-Aid can do here. I feel like they, they already met once earlier in bracket today, and it went really close with light, or with, uh, <laughs> used to say in light right now. Tony Pajamas almost taking that game, uh, taking the set from Kool-Aid, but Kool-Aid brought it back. He actually got up and left in the mid-set. Somehow that helped him figure it out. Yeah, he actually reversed 2 0 him in that best of three set. So we'll see if either of these players made any more adjustments. In the meantime, if they have any ideas coming in from that last set. So far, it looks like Kool-Aid's still playing it by the books, and it's working out for him. Definitely. I like the way that Tony uses trades in this matchup. Nice up air two from Kool-Aid, almost sending Tony to the top, but it's going to take a little bit more to end Nessa's stock. Kool-Aid all over Tony right now with these air dodges. And ah. again, dude, Tony is doing like the no mix-up mix-up, landing right on top of Kool-Aid, and he doesn't seem like he's ready for it. Doesn't have the right punish. Nice weight with that side magnet from Tony, but Kool-Aid not giving him any openings. Okay. Oh, okay. Good hesitation from Kool-Aid. Catching him with the up tilt. It's good patience from Kool-Aid. I think that was like the biggest caveat of the last matchup, right? Like, once Kool-Aid kind of slowed down and took a breath, like, he started doing better in the matchup. Yep. Tony really punishes his patience, like, really, really well. Oh, is that going to be it? He's going to try. Very really close. close. Yeah. All right. Kool-Aid going to try and make it back. Oh, wow. Nice. nice. Quick reaction. That up air. Catching that ledge jump. And Tony... A very angry Ness with two stocks to a Kool-Aid's one stock on Sheik. Good needles and good fair catching. You know, the, the needles pushed Tony onto the platform, put him in a bad spot, and Kool-Aid cashed in. Really good stuff from him. Oh, but this is equally a bad situation for Kool-Aid, getting caught on that platform against Ness. Not where you want to be. Nice job. I think Kool-Aid was interrupting the Nair a whole bunch right there, actually, yep. which is a really good attempt from Tony, and he's going to carry Kool-Aid all the way off the side, but Kool-Aid's going to make it back. Nice space bear, too, to force a little more pressure on Tony. Well, uh-oh. Nice use of that up B again from Tony. Kool Aid applying the pressure, rolling in, getting those kills when he can. Nice movement by Kool Aid, avoiding the forward air and punishing with a grab. This is a really close game, too. I mean, very, oh my goodness. Great hesitation from Kool Aid. Waited out the air dodge, got the tipper up smash. Really good stuff. Yeah, Kool Aid, I love watching him play. I talked to Tony about this. He doesn't do anything. But people are just, they have so much respect for him Yes. that he gets stuff from it. Kool-Aid got the throw, did nothing, and waited for Tony to air dodge into that up smash. Earlier in the game, he would get the throw, jump, Tony would air dodge, and then Kool-Aid would hit him with a move. It's just, it's been working out, man. People are just so afraid of that follow-up. And that's actually a move that I've seen Tony have a lot of success with today is Ness's dash attack. Definitely a kind of an unconventional option, but I mean, if you're throwing in a lot of grabs and you need to throw in an extended hitbox, yep. hey, it's going to work out for you. Got a lot of space. You can get around some, some of the sword users. I know Tony likes to use it in those matchups. And uh, Sheik's Fair, nearly as long as a sword, so I'm sure that's why we're seeing so much of it. Ooh, nice charge of the forward smash. I like that. Kool-Aid stared Danger down right in the face. In the face of Danger, he stood strong. He got a nice little charge forward smash for it. Keeping the pressure on, keeping Tony off stage where he does not want to be with us. He does manage to make it back, but Kool Aid got the read on that jump, got the back air, and even more back air. <laughs> you know, Tony's going to take that last one, I think, because he, yeah. he got stage position back and he wasn't getting abused off that left side of the stage. Kool Aid reads that roll with the forward tilt, keeps Tony in a bad position, almost catches that air dodge too. Nice challenge with the back air from Tony, and let's see him get some offense started of his own here. All right, it looks like he went for a mix up there, but Kool Aid just rolled right behind it to get out of it. Didn't want to mess with any of that. Okay. Nice oh. needles from Cheek. Okay, and a back air two is going to put Tony in a really bad position. Okay, I wasn't sure if the wind box was going to mess with him somehow right there. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> the like that grenade's a very strange move in terms of how it interacts with people, but Kool Aid threw it a little deep. And now, here's the thing with Cheek. Like, if Tony can land and start some offense of his own, it's going to be dangerous, but a bouncing fish, not quite enough, man. No, no. It looked like Tony almost got caught running away there, too, but. Ended up surviving it at 170 coast to coast. Grab could be big here. Yeah, that's huge, especially because Tony's going to be throwing out the... Ooh, a down air from Kool-Aid. Sometimes you just got to throw it out, man, and make it known that you can do it. Another rising nair from Kool-Aid. He's had so... He's found so much, I don't know, opportunity with that move and made it work out for him. Yeah, it's a pretty fast move. 
and pretty good for killing, apparently, because we just found out, and Tony just found out after that last stock. Nice player into in there, pushing Tony off. Nice S nice DI from Tony to push out of the rapid jabs from Sheik. That jab is not wow. that good. Wow. Yep. He was steps ahead of Kool-Aid on that one interaction due to the just immediate jump up into that up air. Okay, good jabs coming out from Kool-Aid again, but I'm, Tony's always escaping it before that final hit, so that's good. Nice. Wow, nice working around that up air from Tony. Getting an up air of his own. You know what Tony's looking for right there. Yep. <laughs> PK Thunder 2 setup. Nice. Another Nair, I'm telling you. He's just got to keep using these Nairs because he's, he's finding them every single time. Then. Yeah. He's getting a lot of mileage out of them. But all things considered, pretty close percent. Tony's getting the trades and uh, usually coming out on top. Wow. That would have been awesome of a hit. <laughs> so. here's, here's the big thing of this matchup is that Tony has caught Kool-Aid's jump off the ledge a lot. Wow. A nice pivot grab from Tony. He's going to forward throw, though. He wants the damage. He's not ready for a back throw yet. That's yeah. Another. He's at a pretty inconvenient spot for it. <gasps> wow. It's like a Mario up smash, man. <laughs> really good spacing, but it hits forward too. Like it's right. crazy. That was really great spacing from Tony. I feel like Kule like won the exchanges in that matchup like a ton, but that he was did. really well played. That's like the thing against Sheik. Sometimes you just got to accept that you're going to get hit a lot. You're going to be taking a lot of damage, and that's okay. And like you said earlier in the set, Tony is going for the trades, and I think that's sort of what's working out. As mm. powerful as Kule looks in the set, Tony's keeping it close by mirroring out of the combos. You know, Sheik doesn't really tack on as much percent. As you would think yeah. from watching the game. So Tony is keeping it close and close enough for that upper to kill and tie it up one to one. And just like last time, we're staying on Smash. Yeah, I don't blame Kool Aid. I mean, in the first game, he did really, really well. And in the second game, it kind of came down to this last hit situation. Tony just came out on top. So I think Smashville, we might see it for the entire set. Yeah. Tony getting an early grab into a couple aerials, though. Nice air dodge out by Kool Aid. Wow, nice uh, mix up there with the back air trying to get out of the combo instead, but Kool-Aid was ready for Ooh. it. Ooh, that was smooth. I like that movement a lot. Yeah. Nice little stall with the side magnet and uh, getting an up air. I mean, up air has been Tony's like new thing right now in this matchup, and it's really working out. Ooh. Ooh, boy, dangerous spot to be in, but he should be just fine making it back. Yep, Tony knowing he can make it back all the way that deep from the stage, uh, deep down below the stage, so. And it looks like Kool-Aid actually caught Tony's jump there. Tony's trying to jump out of the jab combo, but Kool-Aid caught it. Put him in a really good spot. No! Oh All my right. goodness. Oh my goodness. That was so close. I would so. not have been surprised. That much rage on the platform. I think if he didn't hesitate, it might have been enough to do it. Kool-Aid opting to roll out of that situation, trying to force Tony to make a move, and he does. Tony trying to land again. Nice air dodge back down to the stage. Yeah, and I think that was Kool-Aid's patience haunting him there, and you know, Tony managed to get past oh. that air dodge. That was a, that was a lot of special out. moves. <laughs> A lot of B button. Don't see a lot of that often, but Kool Aid giving it to us all at once. Okay, Kool Aid looking for the back air. I like how both these players have slowed it down. They understand that this is a pivotal moment in this game and therefore the set. But you know what? Kool Aid catching another air dodge from Tony. Really good stuff. Only 63% too. And I mean, I know that throw was really close to killing, but I don't think Kool Aid will put himself in a bad position like that again. So, oh my god, though, as I say that, yeah, <laughs> almost gets caught with a forward smash. And a buffer shield, dude. Frames off. Tony almost had that punish, but not quite. I like it too, because I mean, even if you throw out those crazy options and they don't work, puts in the other guy's head, you know? Kool Aid's got to respect that. Oh, those. that's going to be a very unfortunate. Ooh. But wow. I'm surprised both players live there. I thought for sure one of them would be going down. I would have guaranteed that one of them was dead. Yeah. But, well, nice trade again from Tony. That's really good stuff from Tony. Uh, tying up the stocks, and uh, you know, this is a very similar situation that we saw in game two. Let's see what Kool Aid can do. Nice walk up grab. Going for a bouncing fish. Cannot find it though. Yeah, it looked like Tony actually had the right DI for Kool Aid to get the follow up too, but slight hesitation. Nice throw in from Tony. Gets some of the stage control back, but Kool Aid opens it up with the dash attack. I think one of the biggest things in this matchup is how Kool Aid is dealing with. Oh man, he really can't punish that. Tony's doing such a good job weaving around Kool Aid's options to punish the yeah. uh, PK Thunder 2 onto stage. Wow, the dash attacks coming in, comboing into each other, and let's see if Tony can get something started here. Oh, a, a forward tilt into a spot dodge into another forward tilt. Great patience from Tony. Waiting out all those options and getting a punish. Oh boy, that was. Okay, a little charge on the forward smash, but he gets sent the other way. It's not going to kill yet. Nice stall, Cooley looking for a move. Tony finds his way to the ground, all things Ooh. after all of that. Okay, bouncing fish to the other side again though. Kool-Aid just keeps catching Tony, and you gotta give Tony credit there is that he's moving to the other side of the stage, you know what I mean? Down air, wow, what a risky option because now he's off stage against Tony's nest. Nice air dodge into a fair. Kool-Aid looking for a move, doesn't get it. Tony in a bad spot again. Kool-Aid going for the trip. 
Jump back air. Nice and smooth from Kool-Aid. Going to be taking game three. I like this set a lot, though, man. Like, it's so fun. Both these players are playing really well. Definitely. A couple different choices, you know, made by Tony, and the set goes, and that game goes the other way. Exactly, yeah. I mean, that throw could have changed the whole set. So many things could have went slightly differently. If Kool-Aid wasn't able to buffer that shield on that forward smash. Yeah, a whole different set, yep. yeah. But anyway, going right back to Smash for game four. I think you might be right on the entire set of Smashville prediction. Nice, good shield work from Tony. He's cooking with the basic stuff. Already 30, 40% and mounting. Nice interruption of that edge guard though by Kool-Aid Spare. And now he's gonna get some offense of his own. Flapping him in percent, or passing him in percentage already. Tony with a uh, less than optimal roll in. Kool-Aid was ready for it. And this is a bad spot to be in, but <gasps> that's, it. that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's set knockback, dude. You yep. can't be fighting Ness on the platform like that, 100%. If I've seen it once, I've seen it a million times. <laughs> really really great recognition of the situation from Tony. I said Kool-Aid wouldn't do it again. I was 100% I was going to say, you just said Kool-Aid wouldn't do it again. Why would he? There's no reason. But anyway, good recognition by Tony. And you know what, Kool-Aid, he's OK. He's already got 107% on this Ness, and he's, keep, he's keeping it up. All right. Tony has seemed to be on to the bouncing fish habit. Cooley has been getting him a lot less out of the throws. But he's still making things happen with the aerials. You know, he's still hitting Tony here and there. Nope. Good rising up there, too, right towards the top of the stage. But again, not enough. And that's the thing, like, dying that early as Sheik is just such a big deal. Definitely. Oh, nice right. power shield. Oh, whiffs the punish, though. I think right there he might want to go for the forward smash, but nice. Jumping up with the bouncing fish, catching Tony with it. Nice use of that side magnet again. But Sick. Yeah, yeah. Kool-Aid was just—he knew he was going to ledge. He was ready with the trump. Yeah. It was a great first option from Tony, and he avoided it. But Kool-Aid was ready to trump him on the next one. So. Yeah. All right. Nice spacing there from Tony, staying out of the range of fear while still getting a fear of his own. But here is Sheik at work. Okay, Tony on the platform. I love that he just held the shield and said, I'm going to pick a safe time to get off of here. Nice spacing on the down smash, too. He's sending Kool-Aid off stage. Air, risky air dash from Kool-Aid, but it'll work out. And that pivot tilt was just a few pixels from hitting Ooh. Tony with a nice option there, going for offense. Yeah, that was a great interception by Tony. I mean, using the fair to challenge Sheik's approach. Oh, no. Oh, jumps in the way. Smart stuff from Kool-Aid. That was really well played. Oh, my goodness. That really was. It looked like what was just a missed punish turning into a whole stock from Kool-Aid. So yeah. awesome stuff.